We continue now at the top of Daf Yer Aleph from Aleph and Maseches Gitin. This is Gitin Daf 11a. And the previous summit, the Gemara was discussing the opinion of Rabbi Shimon that if you have a Get Isha with non Jewish signatures on it, it's kosher. And the Gemara says, why is it kosher? It's because Rabbi Shimon follows the opinion of Rabbi Lazar that there's that Edim Mesira Karti. And since there are Edim Mesira in this case, there are Edim that see the giving of the Get, they are the ones that make it a kosher Get. And therefore, the fact that there are non Jewish signatures is not an issue. But the Gemara asks, isn't there a problem of Mizuyaf Mitochu? If you have non Jewish signatures, you might come to rely on those who signed it. And that's called Mizuyaf Mitochu. It's forged from within. And so then that should be a problem. And the Gemara answers here we're talking about Beshemos Muvhakin. We're talking about names which are clearly non Jewish names. And there's no way they're going to come to rely on those, on those individuals. The Gemara says, Hey, Chidami Shemos Muvhakin. What are examples of Shemos Muvhakin? Amar Papa, Papa says, Kagon Hormiz, Vavudina Bar Shivsoi, Uvar. Kidri, Uvati, Vinokim Ono, all of these are names of non Jews that are clearly non Jewish names and they would not belong to Jews. And Rashi explains, Beshemos Muvakin, the Ovde Kochavim, the Loshrihi, Yisrael, the Maski, Bahanush Mosin, these are names that Jews generally do not have, the Sulo Asi, the Mismachalayo, the Made the Yediah, the Ovde Kochavim, him, no one's going to rely on these individuals, it's clear that they are not Jewish. Hormiz Vavudina Bar Shiv Soyo, Var Kidri, Bati, Vinokim Ono, Kulam Shemos, Dayone Ovde Kochavim, him, these are all names of judges of the idol world. Worshippers. And the Gemara continues, Avel Shema Shein Mufakim. So, according to what we're saying now, let's say it would be names that are not clearly non Jewish names. So, my, what would be the halacha? Lo, the halacha would be no, it would not be good in such a situation. Again, because you might come to rely on those signatures, and those are signatures of non Jews. But the Gemara says, Ihachi, if so, if that's the case, Adetani Seifalo Huskru Elabizman Shanasu It says at the end of the Mishnah that the only problem is, is if it's done not in a court. So, Livlog Velisni Bidida, but we can actually divide within this case itself, meaning even within the courts, you have some cases that are good and some cases that are not good. It should have said as follows, It should have said, when do we say that it's kosher? If you have shameless mufakin, if it's clearly non-Jewish names. But if it's shameless she'en mufakin, it's not going to be good. And that would be true even if you're in a court system, not only in a situation of hediotos. And Rashi says, You should make this distinction even in the case of Erchos. You have some cases which are good, meaning by Shemus Mufakin, and you have some cases which are not good. And so the Gemara answers, That's actually what the Mishnah is saying at the end. The Mishnah means as follows. When is this true? When you have Shemus Mufakin. But if it's Shemus She'en Mufakin, if it's names that are not clear that they belong to non Jews. So in that situation, what the Mishnah is saying is, It's as if it was made in a non-Jewish situation, not of a court, upsulan and its puzzle. In other words, if it's made by a non-court of the non-Jews, then it's not going to be kosher, and that's going to be the same thing if it's made in court, if it's shame or shame of Hakan. And Rashi explains, Now Rashi over here points out that when it says that it is as if it's made behediot, that actually is a reference not to a case of Gedisha, it's a case of other documents, other staros, let's say, of a sale. So in that case, if that's made in a non-court below Erchos, not being made in Erchos, which are the non-Jewish courts, Rashi says that's for sure possible. In other words, when the mission at the beginning said that the Erchos, that if you have staros that are made in Erchos, it's kosher, it's talking about a star let's say, Ashtar Mecher, that's only true in the Erchos. If it's not made in the Erchos, it's for sure puzzle. Because then there's a real suspicion that what is that the signatures over here are a lie. If you have the non-Jewish courts, we can assume that they are honest, but that's not true if you're not within that court system. Rashi says, when we talk about Nasu Behedyot, when we make a distinction between Erchos and Hedyot, that is certainly by other Shtaros. We don't make such a distinction when we're talking about Gedisha. We're only talking about Shtaros that are there for evidence. There it makes sense to make a distinction between Behedyot and, and by Erchos. Because by Gedisha, over there, you have to actually affect the Kenyan, you have to affect the separation. So over there, there is no distinction between Hedyot and Archos, and the whole point by Gedisha is, is that essentially we ignore the signatures because we see that they are shameless Mufak, and we understand that they belong to non-Jews, and we're really relying on the Edi Mesira. So we're saying as follows. We only say that Gedisha's puzzle in a situation where the names are not clear that they belong to the non-Jews. In such a situation, that's like other Shtaros that are made not within the courts. And so that's what the, again, that's what the Mishnah means. The Mishnah is saying that by Shemel Shemel Vakin, it is going to be a problem similar to other Shtaros that are not made in the court system. They're made by non-Jews outside of the court system. And the 
Gemara says, V'ibay Sam, if you want, I could say another explanation in terms of what the end of the Mishnah means. Seifa Asan Legite Mamun. The end of the Mishnah actually is not even talking about Gedisha. It's only referring to documents, uh, to monetary documents. V'hachi Kamar, and here's what the Mishnah is saying. Lo Huzkuru Gite Mamun Dipsulim Elabizman Shanasu Behedyot. When we talk about Shtaros, uh, monetary Shtaros, they're only going to be possible if they're not made within the court system. And Rashi says, we buy same asefa lo huskuru de katani asan legite mamon virabonon ka amrile. Now, what that means is, it's actually the rabbonon that are speaking at the end of the Mishnah. Vareshakai, it's a continuation of the beginning of the Mishnah. Kalashtaro shal mamon ha olin bercho shalov de kochavim ksherin again, kagon shtari mecher, all kinds of documents related to evidence related to money that's going to be kosher in the non-jewish in the non-jewish courts this time as we said earlier the money really creates the Kenyan inside the star which star is just there for testimony it's just there for evidence when the non-jewish courts are not going to make themselves look bad by presenting bad evidence they're not going to write up a star unless it was true the only time there's a problem with these monetary kinds of shtaris is if they're made by a hediot, meaning they're made by a non-court, then already there's a problem that it might be false. And the Gemara continues, Tanya, we learned in a Bryce, and this is from the Tosef, to Amr Abelazar, Amr Abelazar, Amr Abelazar, Amr Abelazar, Amr Abelazar, says, Kach Amr Abishimin L'Chachamim B'Tzidon. This is what Rabbi Shimon said to the Chachamim in Sidon, and Rashi over here says, Amr Abishimin L'Chachamim, Smach L'Devar of Da'afei L'Ksher. What Rabbi Shimon was doing was bringing evidence to his argument that by Gite Noshim, it's also kosher if it has non-Jewish signatures, and he argued as follows. He said, Lo Nech L'Ku Rabbi Akiva V'Chachamim. Rabbi Akiva and the Chachamim, which was the previous generation, they only argued, or they didn't to argue, I'll call Ashtaros Olin Bercho Shalov de Kochavim. Let's say you have other kinds of documents that are formed within the non within the court system of the non Jews. Shaafa Pisha Chosmean Ov de Kochavim, even though they're signed by non Jews, Ksherim, they're going to be kosher. Viafilu Gite Noshim Vishachur Avadim. There was no Machlokas, and not only that, that's true even by Gite Noshim and even Shachur Avadim. They are all kosher, even if they are signed by non Jews, even if they're in the non Jewish court system. Lo Nechlego El of Isman Shanasu Behedyat. The only Machlokas says Rabbi Shimon to the Chachamim between Rabbi Akiva and the Chachamim, the only machlokas is a situation where it's made not in the court system. Should Rabbi Akiva machshir, that Rabbi Akiva says it's kosher even if it's not in the court system, the Chachamim poslim and the Chachamim say it's posel, chutz mi gitei noshim v'shechrui avodim, with the exception of gitei noshim and shechrui avodim. And Rashi explains, lo nechliko Rabbi Akiva v'chachamim shein dor shayi lefaneinu, again that's the generation before us, al shtaros ha'olem shein ksherin v'afilu gitei noshim v'shechrui avodim, again, if they're made in the court system of the non-Jews, it's going to be kosher, all kinds of documents, even Gitei Noshim and Shechruri Avodim. Rashi points out the Chutz Mi Gitei Noshim Lo Garcin and Beresha to Milsa de Rabbi Shimon Betosefta. That Chutz Mi Gitei Noshim is not learned at the beginning of the statement, and that's the way we have it. We don't have it at the beginning of the statement either. El Abiseva de Milsa de Rabbon and Garisla. It's actually at the end of what the Chachamim say as follows, and it should be as follows, Vahachi Garcin, and it should be as follows. Lo Nechliko El Abizman Shanasu Behediot. They only argue in a situation where it's in the where it's not in the court system. Rabbi Akiva ma'achshir v'chachamim poslim. The Rabbi Akiva says kosher, and the chachamim say posel. Chutz mi gite noshim v'shichrure avodim, except for gite noshim and shichrure avodim. And Rashi explains what does that mean. Chutz mi gite noshim v'shichrure avodim. The kevan shenasu behedyo means as follows: If it's made not in the court system, shtarei mecher dekai mi l'raya ve'alein the sahadi of the kochavim samchin. And so when we're talking about shtarei mecher, we're, at, we're we're actually relying on the document for evidence. So they're puzzle. There we say it's puzzle. The emor shikra chasim because in that situation you have to assume that what they signed might have been a lie. Avol gite noshim lav aleim samchin. But when it comes to gite noshim, we're actually not even relying on the document. We're relying on the Edim Asira. It's shameless Muvak and it's clear that it's non Jewish signatures, and therefore we're not going to rely on them. And therefore, what we're saying is as follows The Chachamim say it's possible in a situation where it's Nasu Behediot if the Shtar is there for Raya, if the, shtar, if the Shtar is there for evidence. But if you're talking about Gite Nashim and Shechuri Avadim, where the Shtar is not serving as any evidence, and it's shameless Muvak and we're clearly not relying on the signatures, even the Chachamim would say it's kosher in such a situation, even if it was not made in the court system of the non-Jews and it was signed but it was signed by non-Jews and the Tosefta continues Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel Omer Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel says Af eluk sheirin b'makam shein Yisrael chosmin that even when we're talking about Gitei Noshim and Shechuri Avadim that's only going to be kosher in areas where the Jews are not signing Avol b'makam shein Yisrael chosmin lo but places where the Jews are signing so then we're not going to allow it by Gitei Noshim and Rashi explains 
Rav Shem ben Gamliel Lomer Af Elu Gite Noshem Ksherim B'Mokom Shein Yisrael Chos Min Kolomer. What it means is as follows: Af Elu Gite Noshem Shatem Machshir, and even Gite Noshem, which you're saying is kosher, Eimos Ayin Ksherim. When is it true that it's kosher B'Mokom Shein Yisrael Chos Min Beir Sheino Ovdei Kolchavim Manichin Es Yisrael Lachsum? You're talking about in a city where the non-Jews don't allow the Jews to sign. The Kavan Shein Yisrael Chos Min Ba'Oso Yir Hakol Yodim Shem Ovdei Kolchavim. Since the Jews are not allowed to sign, everybody knows these are signatures of the non-Jews. Vein Som Chana Leim. They're not going to rely on those. We're going to make sure to have proper Jewish Ede Mesira. But if you're in a place where the Jews do sign, so he says, even though these are Shemos Muvhakin, even though it's clear that this is the names of Ovde Kochavim, Hain Psul, and it's still possible. Because if you allow this, you're going to end up allowing names that are Shemos Shein and Muvhakin. And so therefore, that's why Rabbi Shimon Gamliel is Machmir and only allows it in these locations where Jews do not sign. And the Gemara continues, Why don't we make a Gezeir in places where Jews don't sign and say that's a problem because of places where Jews do sign? And to that the Gemara says, Shmo bishma machlef. Names can get mixed up with names. If you're going to allow it by Shemos Muvhakin, you might allow it by Shemos Sheinam Muvhakin. But Asra bi Asra lo mechlef. But locations, that people are not going to get confused. And the Gemara continues, Ravina Savar Lachshuri Bhnufiyasa Dar Moy. Ravina thought to say that other stars would be kosher if they're made by the gathering of non Jews that's not not within the court system. Amrle Rafam Rafam Setem Erchos Tanan, it says in the Mishnah only Erchos, it has to be within the court system. Amar Rava Rava says, Hashtara Parsa de Masri Nihile Beape Sahada Israel, if you have a Persian Shtar that is given over in front of witnesses that are Jewish, so Magbinon Bey Mibnechari, you can use such a star, but only to collect from free property. You can't collect Collect from property that has a lien on it, and the Gemara says, "Vahalo yadi lemikra," but they don't know, meaning to say, the witnesses that are there as the Ede Mesira, so they don't know how to read what's on the star. So how can they be proper Ede Mesira? And the Gemara says, "Bid yadi," they know the language, and therefore they are able to act as proper Ede Mesira. But the Gemara says, "Don't we need it to be a writing that cannot be forged of Vilek, and you don't have that generally by the Persian Shtaris. They weren't made; the the parchment was not made with the gall nuts." with the gallnut juice, and therefore it was able to be forged. And the Gemara says, B'da'afitza, and we're talking about Shtaros, that they did use the gallnut juice, and therefore it's not able to be forged. But we have a halacha in documents. You have to review what was at the document at the bottom. The bottom line should review what the Shtar is talking about. Veleka, they don't do that with the Persian Shtaros. And the Gemara says, B'da'afitza, in this case, they actually did do that. They went over the, the contents of the Shtar at the bottom of the Shtar, and therefore it's a kosher Shtar. Star. But the Gemara says, if so, so it's a good star. You should be able to collect even from property with a lien on it. And to that, the Gemara says, less like call in this situation, you don't have a call since Jews did not sign, word it did not go out. And so the, lo, the lochim, the people who purchase property, they can't protect themselves. They don't realize that there's a lien on the property. And that's why you cannot collect from the chas of Meshubad. And the Gemara continues, by Minei Reish Lakish, Meir of Yochanan, Reish Lakish asked from Reb Yochanan the following question, and we will continue with this discussion in the next video on Daf Yud Aleph, Amud Beis.